All right, a barber. Hello, folks. Welcome back to Pillars of Eternity. Um, we are in the sanitarium, and we are going to have a little walk around and a chat with everyone. Well met, friend. Uh, we spoke to you last time. All right, then. Let's speak to you. The construct turns its head towards you and watches warily. Okay, a couple of patients. Oh, more constructs. Can we go in there? No, speak. We just spoke. Sanitarium guard. Keep your distance. Wix is in that cell back there. We've had incidents when people got close. It's fine. We're all right. We can look after ourselves. We are hard as nails. Let's go in here. Things in here to look at. Ooh. Nobody's watching us. Not really a thief. Didn't touch a thing. The Durwood Part 2. The Broken Stone War. Yeah, I don't think we're too concerned about that. Unless it's a book that we're looking for. Uh, the man who waits in through an interview, Graham in the North Ward. Uh, okay. Who's the only one with access? Cademan Azo. I'm assuming that's what we're after here. But that door's locked, I guess. Where the witches are. More constructs. Okay, I take it that's the North Ward. This is the South Ward. What do these tables have to say for themselves? Crooked chalk tally marks cover the surface of this table. Those are all just patients. I say just patients. They're, they've all got a personality. The crooked board show deep gouge marks. They're space-like folk or elven fingernails okay this I'm guessing should be a dead end oh hello or not okay let's head south are you a patient you're a patient that's fine are these little rooms we can go in come on yeah, nothing in there, nothing in there, nothing okay. in there, okay. Lots of little cells, little passageways, okay, let's check out this door, have a look in here, anyone around? Ah, okay, let's have a look at his experiments first. Something churns and bubbles in this tank. The copper wires and conduits are shiny. The device is warm to the touch. Okay. Same again. And same again. Cademan Azo. A round faced balding man turns to face you. His upper lip is pulled upward slightly by his pointed nose, exposing his upper teeth when he scowls. What is the meaning of this? What is the meaning of this? Uh, well, we'd like to access the North Ward, but Ethelmere told me you're not supposed to be doing... Uh, let's get access to the North Ward before we piss him off. Uh, I'd like access to the North Ward. Out of the question. Those patients are in isolation for a reason. So you can coerce them into your experiments. Frail told me everything. Your forehead seems damp all of a sudden. Perhaps I should discuss your insubordination with the Head Warden. Yes, maybe I should. How dare you come down here and meddle? Well, I have no idea the importance of my research. Your research that you're not allowed to be doing anymore. Hmm. He bores up his fist and digs his teeth into his index finger, a growl simmering beneath his breath and a deep scowl compressing Fine. his face. Speak to them for all the good it'll do you. Good. I'm sure the discussions will be fascinating. They will be fascinating. Thank you very much. 
He pulls a heavy key from one of his pockets and nearly slams it down on the floor before handing it to you. Uh, I'm looking for an expert on awakenings. I don't have time to give you directions. Go bother somebody else. Have we annoyed you? I heard you were demoted. How did it happen? Azor's nostrils flare and he bares his upper teeth more broadly. That's none of your concern. Did one of the others put you up to this? Ordmer, that smug weasel. Things went wrong. Everything. I don't know how. I'll never know. He spits on the floor as if to remove a bitter taste from his mouth. Ethelmere told me stuff. Yes, well, Ethelmere hasn't done much good for anybody since he had his soul moved to an inanimate object. So I fail to see why I should let that sway me. If Animancers all followed the commands of their leaders, where would we be? We'd all be as backward and willfully ignorant as Red Seras. We would know nothing about life or death or even ourselves. We would be lost in the dark with no clue to us why. I never thought I'd find myself in agreement with a statue, but Ethelmere's is right about this fellow at least. He sneers at Azo. How easily ambition masquerades as prudence. I'll bet he's fooled even himself. You toy with things beyond your comprehension? It seems to me we're still in the dark. Surely there are other paths that don't involve taking, risking lives? You're right about that much. There are certain questions. I think number three. Surely there are other paths that don't involve Indeed. risking lives. Many lives have been spent in such pursuits. You're going to talk this time, are you? Poems. But tell me this. How does one verify the truth of a poem? If some By its existence? the meaning of our existence, how would we know it from a false one? These are wasted lives. Isn't that the point of philosophy? Animancy, there is progress. We are measurably closer to complete understanding because of our work, and that will be true until our work is complete. Yes, but you're fiddling with souls. We'll solve Widewen's legacy. Some church, some warrior. It will be an animancer, or it will be no one at all. But, like, there's a reason you don't do clinical trials on, say, pregnant women. It's called ethics. You know what I mean? You guys, you have souls. There's factual information within your universe that souls exist and that people are affected by playing with the souls. So surely there should be some sort of kingly regulation that's, you know, ethical. Hmm. Don't like you, Cademan Azo. Have you tried other people? I have, yes. No point in lying about it now that Ethelmere is involved. I asked for volunteers from our patients and a few brave souls came forward. I was very close at one time to a breakthrough. They understood that. They understood their sacrifices would mean something. Yes, well. Hmm. Addendum added, the man who waits. Uh, I received the key to North Ward. He was not pleased. No, I'm sure he wasn't. I'm right, sure then. he wasn't. Right. Look, there's stuff to... Uh, no. No. Okay, there's not stuff to take. Let's head back this way. Is this dead end? This was a dead end. There's nothing in these little cells. No. Let's double time this. Nothing in these cells. Just a patient. Okay, nothing over here. Were you just a patient? You were just a patient. Right in here. Okay. So. Unlock with the North Ward key. Okay, right. I reckon that might be trouble. Let's have a quick save. Oops. Right. Open the door. And walk the dinosaur. Hello! Is this my face? Tell me! Yes, it's your face. Uh, what about over here? Anyone? Nope. Nope. No one here. Hello? Thundering sky... <coughs> Thundering sky, rain of blood, innocence must drown. Well, you know... I'm out of drink. Never mind. I'll get one in a minute. Right. 
What about here? What about here? With this Graham. Hey, this is who we want. This man has the look in his eyes of a hunted animal. And at your approach, he staggers backward to the far corner of his cell, halfway appearing as though he would climb the walls if it would get him farther away from you. Isn't there uh, one of the Discworld novels where where someone is pushing their backs against the wall as if to meld with the wall, but it's done in a comedic Pratchett kind of way? Someone remind me. Um, he cries out a bizarre primal utterance like nothing you have heard. I need to ask you some questions. Graham looks at you blankly. It is unclear whether he understands you or not, but his panic has momentarily subsided. He opens his mouth to speak, but the words that come out are half-formed as though his tongue were cut out. They are impossible for you to discern, if indeed they are words at all. Aloth makes a noise of disgust. Those animancers did this to him. You can see what comes of their meddling. Perception. You're afraid. Do certain visitors make you afraid? He looks at you with uncertainty. Slowly, tentatively, he steps closer to the front of his cell. And as he does so, for the first time, you can perceive his soul within your ken. It is misshapen as though maimed by some jagged instrument, and large expanses of it have been gouged out entirely. You feel no barriers of resistance. If you wanted to, you could look further into Graham's soul. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's make it all pink. You project out toward the main soul in front of you, merging with it, its confusion and fear becoming yours as it whisks you into its depths. You're in your cell. A key turns. The door creaks open on neglected hinges. Thoughts come to you in waves, incomplete, broken, fearful. Standing at the door is a rotund, balding man. His upper teeth and pointy nose remind you of a rat. He beckons, apologetic. You don't want to go. Anything else in your mind is a single word, and the word is no. But it dissolves before it reaches your lips. You press against the back wall, concerned, cornered. You cry out. In darkness, you fight against unseen restraints. You cannot move your arms or legs. The man walks into the room carrying a lit, lit candle, its meagre flame casting long shadows across books and machinery. Straps bind your arms and legs. Cold metal circumscribes the crown of your head and beneath the breadth of your chest. Jeez, I've forgotten how to read. The man is sorry. He is in need of raw materials. They dismantled his work and he needs another source. He needs to show them he was right. He thanks you. He then turns a knob and you feel yourself begin to crack from within and you can feel pieces of you torn away like having your insides chewed by a horde of rats and you are screaming a scream you can barely hear. Oh, keep searching. Keep searching. Another night. Heavy footsteps outside your door coming for you. You look through a slit in your door, the flesh giant, the artificial being, just outside but facing left, facing the end of the hall, the boy there. The boy looks with interest at the giant, then collapses to the floor like a shed snakeskin. The giant convulses for a moment, then rights itself, turns away and leaves. I have no idea what that means. The boy is kind of in control of the giants? Hmm, don't know. Graham looks at you, still wild-eyed, but somehow more present. He nods at you, then walks back to the end of his cell. Okay. So, we've got to speak to the boy. This end. Uh, the guy who's looking to his left, so that would be this way. Mm. Yes, this is the way in. So, there's a cell up here. This isn't the treatment that they were promised upstairs by the cushioned seats and lush carpets. Yes, it's very sort of 1800s sanitarium isn't type, isn't it? Sickness? To be thrown into a cell and subjected to the whims of your captor. Uh, have they made great advances? Mm, these anime answers are m as mad as their patience. Yes, I think. Well, we're not passionate. Yes, I doubt the wealthier citizens have the same experience. I'm sure they have their fair share of family members they'd rather forget. But what if all were treated like this? The sanitarium would never survive. What did these patients do to warrant some conditions? 
Yes, that one. The the number four, number four from a quick look at it. The Anomancers justify their sadism with false cures and charlatans tricks. Any good they've done is a coincidence. We're not a fan of the Anomancers. I suppose if they had a real understanding of all they profess to, they would not do this. Kinda hangs his head. Let's be on our way. This place gnaws at the soul. Hmm, it does. It's not a pretty place. Usgrim. A willowy adolescent boy stands in the centre of his cell, gawkish and stoop-shouldered. He stares straight ahead, the occasional blink is only movement, and it is unclear whether he registers your presence at all behind his glassy, doll-like eyes. In this state, the barriers between your soul and his are thin and porous, easily bypassed if you should wish it. Do it. Let's be nosy. You close your eyes and edge forward toward the boy's soul, and as you near, a sudden malaise comes over you. You are cold and warm all at once, sweating and shivering and straining for breath, as you did on the caravan journey. The soul you approach is the wrong one, a parasitic plant that strangles its host. It is predatory and pitiless, and you have crossed paths with it before. Too late does it occur to you to retract and already you feel yourself plunging into some indeterminable abyss of thought and memory. You are standing in a cell now, the same cell in the sanitarium. The halls are moonlit and empty, and you are waiting. At the far end of the ward, the door opens, revealing a flesh golem in silhouette beneath the stone archway. It makes its usual rounds, the same stops every time, the misbegotten child of despondent creators. When the construct is close, when the construct is close, you coil yourself up and spring forward, passing out of the boy's body as though it were a membrane. You can sense his body behind you collapsing to the floor, a puppet whose strings are cut. You are rushing towards the golem now, bodiless as a gust of wind. Quickly, you think to yourself, quickly, and you feel the strength hemorrhaging from your soul as you dart towards the makeshift abomination. You pass into the golem's shell and overtake the soul implanted within, encircling it, suppressing it and contained in this new vessel you are strong again. You step heavy-footed down corridors, unheeded by the other construct. Oh, that's what he was doing. He was putting his soul into that flesh golem. You step heavy-footed down the corridors, unheeded by the other constructs, and scrutinised only by the wary, untrustworthy eyes of the mad, coming at last to an office piled with books and scribbled papers and the perverse implements of animancy. You set your oversized hands upon a large machine, a nest of globes and tubes and coils in the centre of the room and go to work, bending wires and unsettling alignments. Your surroundings are pulled past you, or perhaps you are pulled past them and they dissolve into a blur. When they settle into place again, you are outside on a clear day, standing in front of a crowd, stacked high above you on the tiered seats of an amphitheatre. You are acting for the crowd, standing deliberately still, but this is no play. A balding man with rodent-like features, mm, is that Azo, is strapping you to a machine, the one you had tampered with. You see your arms for the first time, short and fleshy, unmistakably those of a little girl, but this body is not truly yours. Your mind still holds the same determination, the same hard-heartedness as before. The body itself is cold and vacuous. Unlike the others, this one has no soul of its own. The man speaks and the crowd applauds with an enthusiasm worthy of a hero's entrance. Bear witness, he says, and pulls a lever. The machine shivers and sparks and a bead of sweat rolls down the side of the man's brow. But the crowd's apprehension quickly gives way to awe as a crystal globe fills with a radiant mist that casts the entire theatre aglow. aglow. He opens a valve and the glow crawls through a tube along a length of copper wiring that runs to a set of electrodes beneath your armpits. You feel nothing when it reaches you, as it should be, for you have been leading his work astray periodically for some time, altering notes and settings and playing puppeteer for the hollowborn. But you make it look how people would expect it to look when a body is infused with a soul. In a moment the machine goes dark and the man unstraps you, eyeing you with a scientist's concern. He looks back up at the crowd. Behold, he says, but there is obvious hesitation in his voice. Slowly you take a plodding step forward, then another and another. 
you look up at the man giving giving him the eye contact which no hollowborn is, is capable of which no hollowborn is capable and the crowd gasps the man looks relieved how do you feel he asks at a volume meant for the crowd and this is the moment at the top of your lungs you let out a piercing shriek the man comes to comes towards you his hands outstretched but you run the other way back to the machine with all your strength you drive your head into the crystal globe and it shatters streaking your head with warm blood you drive your head down onto the surface of the machine again and again drawing panic screams for screams from the crowd and by the time the man reaches you your body has already ceased proper function and merely twitches on the cold ground satisfied you depart the corpse in search of another unsuspecting host who could put their faith in animancy now i see what you're doing i see you are pulled again from your surroundings transcending the boundaries of memories and lifetimes deeper and deeper past betrayals and murders and lies upon lies that form the qu the thick webbing of plots beyond mortal comprehension you settle at last on a room you have seen before expansive with a tall device encasing an age or monolith at its center the room is filled with people and the people all look at the device you are yanked suddenly back to reality and the once catatonic boy in the cell is looking directly at you appraising calculating there is no mistaking now that it is the soul of the man who caused your awakening that gazes out from that borrowed husk. A watcher. Okay, so this dude's a soul hopper or something, is he? Uh, you made me into a watcher, I need you to undo it. I believe we share a common past, I'm looking for answers. Not just a watcher, someone who will break those frail little legs of yours. Yeah, I believe we share a common past is that so he makes no effort to hide his disinterest but he continues to search your eyes he makes a slight grunting noise and his eyes soften for an instant and it seems for that moment that he recognizes you he opens his mouth to speak then seems to think better of what he was about to say his jaw tightens i know your look you hunger hunger for answers that elude you it gnaws at your soul. It, us it usurps your reason for being. You are like everyone. I will help you let go. He dodges backward with startling grace, putting himself out of reach. On his face there is no malice, only the dispassion of a farmer putting down a sick animal. Then suddenly he slumps forward. Okay, this could be bad. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Right. Oh dear. Okay, where are we? Uh, we are all the way over here. Flesh construct. Graham, I don't really want to kill these people. Can we move down here? Can we move down here? Everyone is coming. Everyone is coming. This is not good. Can we, can we, can we, can we? Dear, let's not do this. Right, let's do this bit by bit. Right. Ida. Go for him. Nice one. Right, Gabby. Where's Gabby? Gabby is down here. Take this crazed patient. Durant. Durant. Come back to here. Aloth. Oh dear, you're stuck in the middle, aren't you? Uh, Aloth, just go there for a minute. I don't know what to do with you. Yes, your sword, Mr. Karna, go for that dude. Oh, you're stuck in the middle as well. Let's move you back here. Oh, 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 Itumak, come back. Itumak, come back. This does not bode well. Itumak, come for this fella. Come for Gram instead. Oh, idle man. Where's the other dude? Batixa. Mm, not good. Not good at all. Right, uh, into the fray. Oh, that's useful, isn't it? Let's pull you off of her. 
get you into the fray. Missed. Bugger. And now everyone is up here. That's not good at all. Okay. 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 You're going to have to knock this dude down. And Gabby. Gabby, you need to just hit this guy with fire. Durant, you need to smack down some healing. Aloth, you need to try and grab a shit bunch ton of them. I don't think that's going to happen because these guys are moving. Kana, keep doing what you're doing. Oh, Kana, summon me some beetles. That's a good start. And get off. Where are you? You're there. Get off a thing for this next golem. Oh, it ran away. It ran away. That's fine. Uh, I have lost track of what's going on here, but Durance is there. Where? There on the stair. Right there. The little man with clogs on. Right. We're all right for healing. Let's go for buffing. Let's have a little buff. Mr. Durance. Gabrielle has finished what she was doing. Gabrielle is positioned there. That's Gabby. So go for the crazed patient again. See if we can finish it off. Because that's not good. Right. Stuff happened. Stuff happened. Aloth finished. Wood beetles join the party. Nice. Right. That's a good start. Right. Wood beetles on this flesh construct. It's going to call it a contract then. Aloth. Grab them. Whoa. Something just happened. Sagani, where are you? You're taking a pounding off another crazed patient. That's a bugger, isn't it? That's a lot of a bugger. Go for it. Go for it. Do it. Oh, Durance, you need to lay down some healing. Kana, you finished doing something. I have no idea what. Oh, you were summoning, summoning, summoning stuff, weren't you? Now, where are you positioned? You're there. Uh, go and help out Sagani. She needs some assistance. Right, Gabrielle has done her other attack and the thing's dead. Right. Now, just, Gabby could come up here and help these guys, but I think they've got control of it. So Gabby can come over here for this crazed patient. That's what I'm thinking. Durance, you need to smack down a heal. Restore light endurance. Yeah, over there. Over there. Good man. Do it. Get it done. Gabrielle. Did that thing die? Excellent. Right. Gabrielle. Help out... Durant's because he seems to be oh no that's Itumak okay that's fine Sagani is there who's that Aloth Aloth are you still doing stuff you're still doing stuff that's fine did I actually click for Gabby yes Gabby Sagani Sagani you still have him on you oh I thought he was dead right Gabby switch targets Aloth, have you finished casting? You have now. Aloth, get your bolts out onto this crazed patient. Help Sagani out, damn it. Did it die? Target destroyed. Aloth. Excellent. Sagani is free from the melee. Let's pull her back a little bit. Let's pull her back a little bit. Oh, that healing went off. That's good. Oh, she's been caught by someone else. Damn it. Damn it. Kana, switch to this guy. Gabby, can you switch to this guy? I hope so, because Sagani is going to be in trouble otherwise. Kana, you've got two chance off. Aloth finished casting a spell. Yeah, let's go for a necrotic lance. Durant's finished. Durant's, get down some more healing, man. It's a shame I can't get these three in. But Sagani needs it more than anyone. Uh, who else needs some? Durance himself. 
that flesh construct is coming up slowly, isn't it? Ida, you've done stuff. Nice. Okay. Uh, three and what looks to be three. So, go for the outer one for the minute. In fact, knock him down. Okay. That's good. More healing. Isn't there a heal over time, Durance, that you've got somewhere? Or is that what I'm talking about? Uh, air of effect. No, that just... I thought there was like a healing pulse. Ah, is that the one? Over 1.3 seconds. AoE duration, 26 seconds. That's what we're after. That's what we're after. Oh, but it's around you, is it? Okay, let's not do that then. Let's get some more buffs out. Let's do buffs first and then bring you closer to Sagani. Okay, that's fine. Oh, something died. Alos target died. This dude here. Does that mean Sagani is free? Yes. Sagani, come over by Durance. Oh, don't run through the middle. Don't run through the middle. Do you know what? Change your plan. Stay where you are. Stay where the hell you are. Go for... Oh, Christ. Is that Ida? Ida, you're going for this dude. Yeah, Sagani, go for this dude then. Oh, do you know what? Go for Itumax. Go for Itumax target. Where's Itumax? He's going for him. He's nearly down. Right, so Sagani, go for Itumax target, and then we'll mark the next dude. Oh, come on! Fucking hell. Ida, Ida, pull that idle man off. Come on. Target destroyed. Kana. Right, Kana, go for Idle Man. There we go. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Kana, go for Idle Man. Durance. Oh, you're engaged. Fucking hell. You're going to have to take the pain, Durance. Because, jeez, man. Right. Get off Healing Aura. That'll do. That's a start. Uh, Kana's got stuff for healing anyway, so we'll worry about that in a bit. Uh, um, bum, bum, bum. It's Durant's I'm more concerned about. Have you got healing potion? No, you don't. Ida finished his knockdown move. Go for it, Ida. Go for it. Kill him. Right, target destroyed. Wood beetles. Wood beetles. Go for that one. Nice one, wood beetles. Come on. Go for that one. Go on. That's my beetles. Right, Sagani. Target this guy. Are we all going after this guy now? Because he looks to be the only one left. Boom. Excellent. Poor. Oh, right. Of course. Let's pull back to here for a minute. And what we shall do is collect the loot next time, folks, because that fight was quite unexpected and we're a little bit over time. So until then, join us next time for, for looting and trying to track down this dude. So until then, folks, bye-bye for now.